We are talking to a young man named Mick Constantine. A couple of weeks ago, he put out uh, a song that has gone everywhere. It is viral, so to speak. And I'm told that in Ireland, you can't go anywhere without hearing it. The name of the song is There's Only One Conor McGregor. We played it last week during Rick's Picks. He's playing the ukulele while singing this song that he wrote about the rise of Conor McGregor. And it's a, it's a beautiful song. And recently he uh, put it out on iTunes and it has vaulted up the charts. So I thought it would be fun to have Mick on the program to talk about the making of the song, the explosion after it was released. And as you may have heard in my interview with Connor a couple of weeks ago, Connor heard the song and invited Mick out to Las Vegas, which I think is a, is a beautiful gesture in its own right. So now via the magic of Skype, we are being joined by Ireland's own Mick Constantine. There he is. Mick, how are you? <laughs> Not too bad. How are you? It, I'm doing great. Why are you laughing so much? What's so funny? I just, this is just weird talking to you, to be honest. A week ago, I didn't think I'd be on the, the MMA or, but here we are. Here we are, my friend. And I think it's a great way to end the week. And I think it's a great way to, you know, embark on this uh, journey that is Mayweather McGregor fight week. Let me ask you this first off. How did you come up with the idea of making this song? This is something that you do. I've seen your YouTube page. You did one about the Irish football team last year that was incredibly successful. But to come up with this idea of making this song about the fight and the rise of Connor, where did it come from? Um, yeah, so I just had the, when, when there was a lot of talk about the fight at the start, um, I kind of got an idea in my head and then the fight was announced in June and I said, hey, look, I might as well try and write something about this. It's such a, the scale of it is huge. And uh, I always kind of wanted to write a song about Connor. Um, and I kind of held off, uh, until, well, a fight this big. And obviously with the, the publicity that goes with the fight, I thought I could get probably more, um, more reach with the song. So yeah, just sat down one day and uh, started writing. And look, his story in general is unbelievable. And um, it was a lot of fun to write about. And, and then, like, he has so many lines and quotes that are just hilarious. And uh, so he actually, like, I didn't have to come up with a lot of the, the lyrics. The lyrics were just his his quotes. I just had to squeeze them in somewhere. And, um, yeah, people seemed to enjoy it. And yeah, he seemed to enjoy it as well. And And, and you wrote it all yourself? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Well, I I have to say I, there was one or two lines my little brother wrote, so he'll give out to me if I didn't give him uh, a shout out. Um, and how long did it take to actually write this? Because my favorite part about the song is how you were able to blend all those moments together and all those famous lines. I mean, every single one that he's uttered as uh, as as part of this journey in the UFC, it just all comes together so nicely. How long did it actually take? Um, it's just maybe a day or two or a couple wow. of hours. It's just the. Well, my songs either come out really quickly or they just don't come out at all. So I guess I just got, I got lucky with it and I got a catchy chorus out and the rest, like I said, it was actually really enjoyable to write about because you're just going through his career, which is a phenomenal career. Right. And um, just even, I just, I spent a few hours going through just his YouTube videos to make sure I wasn't missing out on any lines. And uh, even that was enjoyable as well. So yeah, no, it wasn't, it was, it was easy enough at the end because of all his quotes and his story. How soon did you get the sense that this was actually spreading everywhere? Because I have to admit, ever since you know we mentioned the song, I get hit up, and I was actually talking to John Kavanaugh about this. So I, I can't believe there's this many Conor McGregor songs out there. I have received so many emails and tweets. Hey, I've, I've written this Conor song. Please play this and that. Somehow yours <laughs> broke through and is everywhere, and you got the attention of Conor. How soon did you get the sense that that happened? Um, well, I saw you actually retweeted it maybe three or four hours after I put it out. So yeah, you could thank me thinking, for all of this. Yeah. <laughs> so, all, I, all the views are thanks to you, Ariel. So I appreciate that. No I'll make sure I sort it out when I see you in Vegas. All but, right. Uh, um, I saw Owen Roddy. Um, someone, someone, one of my friends texted me saying, uh, check out Owen Roddy's Instagram story. And um, so I went and had a look and his story was himself and a few lads driving through Vegas. And he was playing my song in the car. And that was literally four or five hours after. And I was like, no way, this, this actually can't be happening. And I thought, if he has it, surely he'll show Connor. Like, he has to show Connor. <laughs> and then uh, later on that night, like, I couldn't sleep because I was just on my phone the whole time. And uh, one of Connor's management got in touch and said Connor saw the song and he loved it. And then Connor shared it himself on his own Facebook. And yeah, at that point, I was like, yeah, this is, it was insane. It's crazy. And then when do you find out that they actually want you to come out? 
to Las Vegas. And what was your reaction when you got that message? Yeah, so the next day, actually, I was in a studio recording it properly. Um, so this this group, Pundit Arena, that they actually did my song last year as well. So they said, here, look, we love the song and we will pay for the recording. So I was in the studio recording it. I just took a break, checking out my emails, got an email from this person who supposedly said they were Connor's manager and that Connor loved the song and he'd love for uh, he loved to fly me over, put me up in a hotel and get me two tickets for the fight for myself and a friend. So at first I celebrated like crazy. And then for a second, I thought, is, is this a prank? Because if this is a prank, it'd be the most cruel prank of all time. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I was able to confirm that it actually was one of his management. And then, yeah, it's, to be honest, it still hasn't really sank in. Like, it, it's it's just, it's unbelievable. I can't, I kind of... Yeah, I haven't even thought about the fact I'm going to be there because I'm doing so much else. But when yeah. I get there, it's just, yeah, it's, I'm speechless. Did you receive your plane ticket yet? Um, yeah, I, I received the details of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, okay. So I'm not on the private jet, unfortunately. That's fine. Can you, can you fine. believe he actually put me in the economy? It's disgraceful. Uh. I don't know if I'll go anymore. I was sure he was going to put me in business class, but look, I think I'll, I'll get over that thing, yes. seeing as he's given me the two tickets as well. So don't worry about it, Connor. <laughs> Have you actually talked to Connor? No, no, no. Um, I, mem- I imagine he's busy enough with uh, the little event coming uh, sure. in the next few days. But uh, maybe after all things going well, he wins the fight and... Uh, I don't know, I might call into the after party to sing a song or two uh-huh. and so I might see him there. But you did get a follow on Twitter, and that's just as good, in my opinion. Yeah, a follow and a few retweets. Um, in fairness, he... he um, so, when we released the song on iTunes, um, I kind of wanted to do something back, because Connor obviously, has done this massive favor for me. And he's pretty well set up, and I can't really give him much, to be honest, because he has everything. But one of his charities... Um, is this children's hospital that's near enough to where he grew up, uh, Crumlin's Children's Hospital, and all the the proceeds from the, the iTunes song, uh, people buying on iTunes is all going to that hospital. So when he saw that tweet, he um, that was probably why that's the one tweet he retweeted. So it was great that he was re- able to retweet that. Wow. And then um, obviously more people notice now. So hopefully just keep buying it on iTunes. Um, and it's, it's number one at the moment, which is just crazy. Wow. And, uh, but just, yeah, keep buying it. And the more people that buy it, the more money that's going to go to the hospital. So it's, it's fantastic. That's a, that's a really nice gesture. Well done on your part. Um, is this bigger than the, the football song last year for you? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is bigger. Like that was, that was quite big, but it's not to the scale of Conor McGregor. Like the football song was really big in Ireland and the Irish people loved it and maybe around Europe, but Obviously, Connor has a worldwide reach, and I've messages from people from all over the world saying yeah. it's people from Azerbaijan was probably the most random place that I got a phone call or a message from wow. saying someone heard it on an oil rig or something. And I know it's in the Australian charts as well. Um, oh no! Oh, you're back! You're back! Oh yeah, good now. Um, and yeah. and. and Okay, and so of course he has this reach, and of course is is I mean th- th- this is this is life changing stuff. Is this your is this your your full time job? Is it, like are you just a singer songwriter, or do you actually have a full time job? No, I'm actually a, a teacher, so like high school teacher in oh my gosh. over in America, so that age group. Um, so I've just done my school holidays at the moment, so I do songs just for a bit of fun and for my friends and. When we go before we go out and after we we come home from a night out, we might have a, a sing along or something like that. But um, yeah, like even I've been talking to Connor's management and there's been music agents and managers getting in touch and all these people that are gonna do a bit of work after this weekend. So it really could be life changing like that. Yeah, I know I might have to give up the teaching, but <laughs> I don't think the kids will miss me too much. <laughs> oh my gosh, I wonder what those kids are thinking about you right now as you're probably preparing to go back to school. By the way, how old are you? <laughs> I'm 24. 24. Holy smokes. And you're teaching high school kids? You're very young. Yeah. I don't know why they listen to me, but I, I teach gym, so it's not too okay. bad. All right. It's easy All right. enough. <laughs> um, and, and, and who are you taking with you to Las Vegas? Uh, so I'm taking a very good friend of mine. Um, he, 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 in fairness, Padraig O'Sullivan, I'll give his name a shout out. But uh, he's, um, he's 
as big a, a Connor fan as I am, and also I was really, really into MMA and boxing. So um, I kind of had him in my head beforehand, but I have like two or three guys that kind of work for me now, nearly two or three friends. Oh my God. They do all my social media because I don't have time anymore. So I need to say a big thanks to, to Noel Ryan and to Michael Hanley and to uh, Paddy Ryan for the help they've given me because like it's, it's, the one guy is just doing all my media for me. He's not even like he's just, just a teacher as well, but. Um, yeah, they've been so helpful because I just couldn't really handle all the messages anymore and I'm trying to do all, all these interviews and organize myself and it's, yeah, without them, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. Could you imagine what it would be like if he actually does it, if he knocks him out, what will it do for your song? <laughs> I'm not coming back from Vegas. Uh, if that happens, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to stay there for the week. I'm going to have to ring my principal and just tell him I, <laughs> I won't be home for another few days. But uh, yeah, I look... Uh, it's in the song and I wouldn't have wrote it if I didn't think it was going to happen. So, look, I, I believe he, he has as good a chance as any uh, to win it. So he's done the extraordinary before, so why not? I agree. Um, all right. So for those that haven't heard the song, I think we've beat around the bush long enough. I'd love to have you play it. Um, I love the song. I, I showed it to my kids. They loved it too. There's something wonderfully innocent about the song. I think it's the ukulele. It's it's not like in your face. It, it, it's it's wonderfully written. You've done a great job with it. And I think it would be nice to kind of end this journey with uh, you playing it. So if you don't mind, and I hope the Skype connection keeps up, uh, I'd love to get, I feel kind of like yeah. Johnny Carson here on The Tonight Show, uh, you know, having a, a musical guest. It's just a lot of fun. We've never done this before on the program. So let's give it a try. You want me to sing the whole song, yeah, or just some of it? Yeah, I want to hear the whole damn song. I want to hear it. You can't give us half the <laughs> no song. At all. What are you too busy for Here's, us now? Just for you, Ariel. This is <laughs> there's only one Conor McGregor. And thanks again for the retweet and for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Here we go. Hopefully you can hear it okay. A kid from Dublin with more than a dream. He knew one day he'd be the King of the UFC, oh, with a group of fighting Irish not to be pushed over, not here to take part. They were here to take over, and from the start, John Kavanaugh by his side. Whoever thought they'd be known worldwide after 60 G's, baby, and a contract to sign, leaving his old life and the social welfare behind. Then after two years came the featherweight champion of the world, and Connor said he'd make him look like a little girl. It only took 10 seconds to show his talk, wasn't cheap as he connected with the left and poor Aldo the seat there's only one Conor McGregor and there's a fighter better and he's gonna knock out Floyd Mayweather so Floyd watch out cause the Irish are coming you can talk all you want but you do nothing only one Conor McGregor and there's a fighter better and he's gonna knock out Floyd Mayweather so Floyd watch out cause the Irish are coming you can talk all you want but you do nothing the lightweight belt was next in store to do what no other fighter had ever done before became the first same time double champ in history and took the chance to apologize to absolutely nobody he came from working on a building site to get a million dollar paychecks from dana white and there was money his cars and his clothes he flaunts cause the double champ does what the f he wants and mayweather you're old and you're small and the truth is that you'll do feck all cause precision beats power and timing beats speed why have you got a school back floyd you can't can't even read this. There's only one Conor McGregor, and there's a fighter better, and he's gonna knock out Floyd Mayweather. So Floyd, watch out, cause the Irish are coming. You can talk all you want, but you do know. And only one Conor McGregor, and there's a fighter better, and he's gonna knock out Floyd Mayweather. So Floyd, watch out, cause the Irish are coming. You can talk all you want, but you do know. Well, he dresses to kill, boys Lamborghinis at will Can get inside your head like he was Dr. Phil And if you call him out, have a good reason why Or he'll turn around and say, who the is that guy? And on the 26th of August, we're taking over Vegas The Irish invasion, you can't mistake us Singing songs day and night till their voices are sore Because when one of us goes, we all go to war There's only one Conor McGregor, and there's a fighter better And he's gonna knock out Floyd Mayweather So Floyd, watch out, cause the Irish are coming You can talk all you want, but you do nothing, only one Conor McGregor And there's a fighter better And he's gonna knock out Floyd Mayweather So Floyd, watch out, cause the Irish are coming You can talk all you want, but you do nothing 
Yeah, well done, Mick. Perfect Skype connection. It worked. <laughs> well done, my man. Do, this could be a weekly thing if you want. I Every don't mind. Yeah, Can't yeah. See. Maybe next you could write a song about this show. How about that? We'll commission it. That was great. I yeah, no problem at all. I can't get enough of it. Uh, well done, my man. Congratulations. So again, if people go to iTunes and they just type in, there's only one Conor McGregor, yeah. uh, they can download the song. I think it's 99 cents, correct? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah and uh, all the proceeds go to the Kremlin Children's Hospital, right? You even went That's to SBG. That's the one, yeah, up until the fight. Yeah, you even went to SBG, right, and played it for them there? Yeah, yeah, that was really cool. So the Mac Life have been in touch and I did a bit with them. So we did like a little music video type of thing. And um, so in fairness, I got a little tour. Nate the Great, I don't know if you know him. He showed me around the, the SPG gym. Um, and yeah, did a little video there in the in the octagon. And then right in front of that, you know, the mural with Connor and uh, someone painted it. I don't know who did it, but it was a surprise for Connor. It was unreal. Um, and then there was actually like there was a five or six year old class uh, going on when I was in the gym. So one of the mothers came over and asked, would you mind playing the song for all these little tiny kids? So they were probably the, the, the most difficult audience I ever played for because none of them knew who the song was. I yeah. really knew what I was saying, but uh, that, it was good fun. It was interesting. And they were more really impressed by the ukulele than by sure. me. But sure look. Um, last thing I want to ask you, and this is something that I asked a few people when I was in Dublin in 2014, and what continues to impress me about Connor's connection to the Irish people, what does he mean to you? Why, why do you have this passion for him? Why did you feel the need to write a song about him? What does he mean to you and your friends and for the people that you associate with in Dublin? Because I know that, you know, not that long ago, times were tough in Ireland and uh, there was a recession, and he is not your typical Irishman, certainly not as far as Irish athletes are concerned. But for you personally, what does he mean? Yeah, totally. Um, and like most, most of the biggest Irish athletes are like really, really humble and totally different characters to Connor. And I think there's nothing wrong with the way Connor is that like he's brash and he's super confident but like his story is unbelievable so he's full right to be confident and it shows there's nothing wrong with with saying that you're great if you can back it up and if you work hard enough to to get what, what you want to achieve so like it's just his story in general is just phenomenal and the fact that so many people throughout his career have said he, he, he couldn't do something and he just straightened their face says you're wrong and I will do it and he goes and does it um so like he, he, he is an inspirational character because like he's achieved something that is just like I said extraordinary. So I know it's cheesy like and it's stupid in that way, but he showed that if you do put your 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 um, put hard work to it and believe in your goals and think or believe in yourself, like your dreams can come true. I'm going to get so much abuse for saying that now because it's the cheesiest no, it, line of all. It's time true. It's true. Friends, but, it's fine. It's true. Yeah. Believe and achieve it. It's great stuff. Mick, thank you very much for the time. Congratulations on this song becoming a huge success and a big hit. And congratulations on actually getting the song in front of him and getting to fly out to one of the biggest sporting events, uh, at least of our lifetime. It's, it's, it's really cool stuff, and I'm very happy for mm. you. Hopefully we'll see you out there in Las Vegas. Appreciate it, my man. Definitely. Thanks so much for having me. And thanks again for retweeting Ariel and all the support. Like, I really, really appreciate it. No problem. Amazing. No problem. All the best to you. We'll see you soon. There Thank he is. You. Mick Constantine. Really enjoyed having him play the song. That's never happened on the show before. And it kind of felt like, you know, it was a Tonight Show. You have someone on, musical guest, break things up. I thought that that would be a fun way to uh, end at least the interview portion of the show.